Hi, this is Liz Coyne with Light Reading, and I'm here at Mobile World Congress with Andrew Parker from the GSMA. Andrew, thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much. So we're in the Innovation City uh, here at Mobile World Congress. So I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about what that is. The Innovation City is well, a diverse place to experience the latest in technology. And what we say is that 10 years ago, you'd have come to a show like this just to see smartphones. Well, here you see mobile connectivity connecting thousands of different types of devices. Speaking of devices, I mean, also not just devices, we're sitting in a connected bus station, correct? Exactly. It's about immersive technology. And technology nowadays is coming into smart cities, smart homes. And this is a smart city application. Basically, it's a smart bus shelter that tells you when the bus is coming and entertains you while you're waiting for the bus. We've got a number of connected vehicles and connected cars. We have a whole range of industrial connections, and I think that's one of the big stories of the whole show, is many more the everyday things you expect. And we were talking, before we got started on the interview, we were talking about some low-power innovations that are happening right now. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, certainly. What we're seeing is um, low-power networks basically overlay on existing cellular networks. So no more towers, no more than we've already got, which is great, so they can be put away quickly. What I mean is these devices will be smaller, lighter, with much longer battery lives. So it will enable things like wearables. We've got a, a jacket over there, which is designed to have the connectivity sewn into the jacket. So you buy the jacket, you wear it, 10 years, the battery lasts for that type of time. So it doesn't need to be recharged. And this jacket is designed, if you fall over in the snow, you get an avalanche, it will basically find where you are. So it's about safety, but built in, so you don't have to think about it. And that's really what we call pervasive technology. Technology that basically just helps people without people having to interact with it, unless of course they want to. Interesting. So um, can you talk a little bit about what service providers and operators are doing to kind of help these networks come together? Yeah. Basically, what we're seeing is a complete change in operators at the moment. Um, basically, they're taking their networks and they're upgrading them. So they're adding low power connectivity to the existing networks. And what that means is they're making software changes in their cell towers, enabling them to drop in these new networks. And uh, we currently have um, 12 operators planning to launch these new networks this year, and that number's likely to go up very quickly. We've already had 30 live pilots around the world, and this is all happening so fast. And I think what it'll mean is this year, when the networks are deployed, those products will be out by the end of the year and en masse next year. Okay. So let's go take a tour and, and you can show me the sites. Yes, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Uh, basically, what this is the beginning of new industrial applications for the Internet of Things. So what we're seeing now is the mobile network connecting up many new types of things, every everyday objects. This is a pallet, basically, a bog standard pallet used to move freight everywhere in the world. There are 15 billion of these in the world, and this is a connected pallet using low power technology, something called LTM. Basically what it does, it connects to the network, just as your mobile phone does, but to an overlay network. And this overlay network allows many more things to be connected. So it uses low power technology. And what this does is it tells you where the pallet is, um, who it belongs to, basic information like that. So it means you never lose another load again with obvious benefits. So Andrew, you told me about the connected pallet. Why don't you tell me about the truck and how it relates? Well, the truck is really interesting because connected vehicles have been around for a while, but this is a total solution with the driver and the truck. So effectively, the driver here can wear a smart jacket. That smart jacket will show you what the driver's feeling in terms of he's tired, how many miles has he driven. So it saves him filling out loads of paperwork, so leading to a safer drive. But it's all linked with the back of the truck, which is like a container, effectively. And in that container, they can monitor not only the location, but also the temperature to make sure the food's been kept at the right temperature and so securing the load. So the connectivity is built into the structure of the, of the trailer. And by using low power, it means you can actually build it right into the truck. So even if the truck is disconnected from power, the truck will still tell you where it is so stolen loads can be located. All right, Andrew, tell me about this connected seal that we've got here. Uh, this, this is Celia, we call her, and she's basically showing off uh, latest tracking technology. Uh, we have a problem in Scotland with the uh, seal population. 
and what we're doing is tracking the seal, uh, where they swim, their habitats, the idea to learn and find out what the problem is with seal decline. So basically it's a serious story, but it's showing how mobile can be used to track seal whereabouts. And how can this be applied to something like a city? Are there is the, can the same technology be used for something in the city? Exactly. This is using low-power technology. Uh, we've used 3G and we're now trialling low-power technology. And what that means is we can track many more things like smart street lighting, um, street furniture, traffic lights, because what we're trying to do is learn more about the movement of cities and citizens and improve environments. And this new tracking technology is affordable and deployable to do just that. Okay. And what do you have here? This is the tracker we used for the original study. It's a five-year project. In the first uh, two years, we used this 3G module. And now we're using, or plan to use, this module, which is a low-power module using NB-IoT, one of the new licensed low-power technologies. And the big difference between it is not obviously the, just, just the size and the weight, but this lasts at a battery life of 10 years and a broader range, which means you can track the seal for longer and further distance away from the habitats. Great. Thanks so much for the tour today, Andrew. Thank you very much.